The hate and fringe conspiracy theories pushed by the Tree of Life shooting suspect have not gone away. They are spreading. They are increasing. One example, the Washington Post reports that hundreds of anti-Semitic flyers were dropped along the street from the Daytona, across the street, I should say, from the Daytona 500, and they prompted one of the suspected gunmen's online rants. That's the same location where neo-Nazis held up signs like this. Henry Ford was right about the Jews. That's what one read. The sheriff there isn't taking it anymore. Sheriff Michael Chitwood is naming and shaming the people behind the hate speech, even though it's put a target on his back. Watch. When you're trying to crush a radical group of cowardly scumbags, <laughs> unity and sunshine destroy it. There's a lot of people in this room and there's a lot of people around this country of the Jewish faith who are on their hit list. They try to besmirch your character. They try to put death threats out on you and threaten you and your family. Well, I wear that as a badge of honor because I, too, by these clown group, want to shut my big mouth and put a bullet in the back of my head. Go for it. That's my message to you. Wow. Saying go for it did not fall on deaf ears, apparently. Three men have now been arrested for making online threats against Chitwood. One allegedly said, just shoot Chitwood in the head, murder him. Another said, I will kill Chitwood, mark my words. And another, I'm going to shoot Mike Chitwood. So how is he responding to all of this? He's greeting them at the airport. Tyler, Very good I'm Volusia intro. County Sheriff Mike Chitwood. Welcome to Volusia County, Florida. Thank you. Enjoy your stay. Well, <laughs> Sheriff Chitwood joins us now. Thank you for being here. It's so astounding to us sitting here watching what you faced, I think to everyone watching, to how you respond. What, as I understand it, this is not just about the threats to you. This is about threats to your family, right? The people that didn't choose to be in the position you're in. Yeah, that's correct. And I've been doing this for 34 years. And good morning and thank you for having me on. Uh, my family, my daughters, my grandkids, my parents didn't sign up for this. Yeah. But when you got a bunch of cowards that hide behind the anonymity of social media, you know, they, they crank up their base through that. Does the tactic work to name and shame to greet them at the airport, right? Because you're you obviously want to bring this to light, but I think you really want solutions. You want this to stop. Yeah, I, I wanted to stop, and I don't know if history is on my side of being able to end the hate. But what we can do is when you turn the camera on to them and you put up their arrest photos, when you put up their criminal histories and really show the community what a rogues gallery of criminals and thugs they are, it kind of, it kind of sheds a different light on who, who you're dealing with. Yeah, you know, you, I, we remember this press conference that you held back in February. And there were a lot of explicit examples of what was going on in the anti-Semitism in your community. It's very hard to listen to, but I think it's important. So we're going to play just a short part of this for people to sort of wrap their heads around. Leave our country, go back to Israel. You know where you bomb Palestinian kids? Where we fund you stupid Jews? Eight billion dollars a year? Can you, can you imagine? I mean, you don't have to, because it's happening. How common is stuff like that there? You know, it wasn't common, and I think that's what really set me off. Uh, I feel like my community, a home invasion robbery occurred, that uh, a segment of my, my population was targeted for their religion. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to stand for people to be targeted for their religion, for their race, for their sexual orientation or ethnic background. I'm not going to stand for it. You have supported a proposed law there that would actually make anti-Semitic incidents, so things like we just saw, a felony. Talk to me about the law specifically, why you support it, and does it have a shot of becoming law? Yeah, it's House Bill 269. I think I expect it should be signed sometime this week, and it enhances penalties for what you just saw. If you go on private property, which is what we're seeing, and you drop off hateful literature targeting someone for their religion, it's a felony. If you use a projector to shine hateful messages on the side of, of private property, it's a felony. If you get up in somebody's face with a bullhorn and you start screaming anti-Semitic uh, remarks to them, it's a fel it's felony stalking. So we're really looking forward to this. You have previously been a supporter of former President Trump, and the number of hate groups 
surged 55 percent under the beginning few years of his presidency. That's according to the Southern Poverty Law Center. He is the GOP frontrunner for 2024. I wonder if you have any message to him on this front or if you think he bears any responsibility. Uh, just from where I sit, when Charlottesville happened and the former president said, we're as good people on both sides, that was the whistle call that it's okay to be an extremist. And let me let me say about extremism, whether you burn a police station down, burn a police car up, or you're out there trying to wipe out a race or a religion, that is extremism. There is no such thing, in my opinion, as left or right. It's extremism, and it should never be tolerated in American society. So your message to him in this campaign? You got you, you to gotta help us here, Mr. President. You got to help us. If, if you become the president, you got to help us. You cannot be cuddling and, and, and cozying up to these far extreme groups that want to destroy America. Thank you, Sheriff, for not just for this, but for what you do, for what you're standing up for. It means a lot. Thank you.